Welcome to Wake Up with Pastor Scott and Pastor Jason Anderson from Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona. Grab a cup of coffee and enjoy this daily dose of scripture and morning prayer. Brought to you by Christian Living Radio. Uh, this is wrong what? to have that cup in there. It was not designed for that purpose. That is sin. That is evil. Oh, oh wow. To have That's sin? Well, it's, Just a cup in the wrong cup? That's all it took. That's a deal breaker. That's evil. But you did it. Do not oh, no. try, don't try and we'll point the right. speck uh, in my eye when you got a plank in your own. Ow. Welcome to Wake Up, a daily Bible study from Pastors Scott and Jason Anderson, a morning scripture with your morning coffee, brought to you by Living Word. We encourage you to wake up with us every morning by watching us on YouTube. Visit wakeuptv.tv or search Daily Bible Study on YouTube. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. It's so good to have you with us. We're I'm so right glad. Here. Oh, good. A phone call. We're going to do a scripture. We're going to pray every day. We're going to have a great time today. What is our uh, passage today? What are we in? Uh, so we're going to be in uh, Romans 15. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going off of my teaching this weekend. Uh, we're still in This Is Us. And Such trying, a great message. We're trying to get that identity of who we are. Yeah. Um, you know, I know what we've been told. I know mm. what we watch on television. It, just, it, it actually bugs me. Every time you see a pastor on a television show. Mm-hmm. Right? It's it's always that, that hey, everybody's going to burn in hell, everybody's evil, everybody's wrong, uh, when that's not who we are. I'm like, well, that's not who I am. Yeah. Because this weekend we talked yeah, about... Yeah, when we see that, the, the, some, that, that, that projects this wrong image of what Christianity actually is. Right. That, well, that's not what church is. Well, church, you know, what was it Marge Simpson said? said uh, Marge Simpson, do you know that? She's on The Simpsons. Great. She's a great quote. <laughs> She said, oh, I was at church camp this weekend learning how to be judgmental. <laughs> you know? And, that, you know, that's people's uh, right. idea of Christianity and what we're doing is we're, that we're not an accepting people, but that we're here to point out your flaws and your mistakes. I was watching this lawyer. There's a new lawyer show me and Holly are watching. And, uh, yeah, the, the, these girls were getting this um, from, looks like the water where they were at. They're getting these shakes. And so, the, of course, the pastor gets up. What do you mean the shakes? Go, like... Yeah, they would just start shaking. They could, they they lost part of. The, so, oh, yeah, it was messy with them. And so the pastor, they go to this, a church, and the pastor is all they're getting it because they're evil, because she's sleeping around, because this is why they're getting it. And I go, but, no, she didn't. No, we all know she didn't. Uh-uh. That's not who we are. The world says who we are. No, who we are and who we're supposed to be is a church of grace. Is what we talked about this weekend. Read that scripture. The, the church is a hospital. It's meant it to is. to to bring the people who are in pain. Tar- Jesus targeted the people who were hurting, who were down, who were in pain, the outcasts and the rejected, those who would have nothing. Nobody would have anything to do with these people. Right. Jesus went and got those people. Those are the yes. Those are the ones that he went after, and and we are called to follow that kind of pattern, that imitation. Romans chapter 15 says this, therefore, and I love the word therefore. Yes. Right? And I, I, we spent some time this weekend re- recognizing that the whole book of Romans led up to this moment, therefore. Right. Like everything I've said up till now came to this, therefore. <laughs> therefore. And what did it, what, what it case? Forgiveness of sins, redemption, right standing with God. You're righteous by faith. The blessing of God is upon those. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against never him. Never count. Yes, yes. And so we've been redeemed of the Lord so that we might produce fruit another God. That we have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelling on the inside of us. That we're joint heirs with Christ Jesus. That we're released from the bondage of decay. That, that we've we got to stop being uh, conformed to the pattern of this world but be trans transformed by the renewing of the mind. He's like, he's like talking about God's goodness. And then he goes, therefore, ready? Accept yes. one another. Accept one another. Okay. Some translations say receive one another receive. just as Christ also accepted us. Now, how did he accept us though? Did you have to be perfect? Did you have to be living Clean yourself right up and then go see Jesus. Did you, ha- did you have to be without sin? Without ever have done anything wrong. No. Without ever lying, without ever cheating, without ever hurting somebody's feelings. Yeah. No, no. He accepted each of us just the way we were. And Whether we were with our messed up, our, our junk and our garbage and our wrong thinkings and wrong... Whatever is inside of us that's not right. He said, yeah, just and be you. Satan's so good at bringing division right. in this world, Right. Right, we we start to separate ourselves into these little groups that say, "Well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, not as like, bad as Ted." 
Republicans and Democrats, right? right? Well, I believe in this. I don't believe in that. I believe in that. I like country music. I like rock music. I don't like this show. I like this show. Like right. we start to separate ourselves in all these little groups and we say things like, well, I don't get along with people like that. Yeah. I'll, 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 I can't stand that guy because he just, he's like, it's like literally fire and ice. Listen, if you put, if you have fire and ice and you put them together, you get actually something that's quite comfortable. <laughs> yeah, neither one is comfortable. No, fire's you not nice bad. Water. Ice is bad. Right in the middle. Put them together. Put them together. It's like peanut butter and chocolate. Well, you just, no, that's horrible. I hate peanut butter and I hate chocolate. Oh, but if you didn't hate peanut butter and chocolate, okay, so it's like. Well, you're like saying if you didn't hate fire and ice. It's, it's like fish and chips. I don't like I don't like fish and chips. What do you have? Do I you like, like something where there's two different things that go well together? I don't know if I. That's an interesting point. I don't know if I do. Maybe I'm a person that I like all my food. Do you like me? I do love you. Okay, so and we're completely. We're very opposite. We're very different. We are, but we're very perfect, and we complement each other. And I think that that a lot of times people say, "Well, you know, somebody else." Uh, I, I just don't get along with uh, girls. I just I can't stand girls. You know, I I just don't like uh, guys like that. Those that whole I don't. And we start you to create all these entire... divisions, divisions of people we decide right. we do or don't like. Right. Well, I just don't like, have you ever done that? What? Have you ever heard someone do that? Right? And as a young person, you might do, I've done it before, or maybe you do it now. So. We did it in high I don't like people, I, I, I just don't like him. We didn't like I don't, I don't even know him. Do you know, do you even know him? I don't know him, but I can tell you right now, I don't like that dude. I didn't like mods. Do you remember mods? Did anybody oh, yeah. remember out there? I mean, if you were, I apologize, but we were... Because even in school, you find out that you're broken up into groups. Totally. The mods. We had the mods. We had the wrestlers. We had the, the football players. We, we The jocks. Had, we had the jocks. We had the cowboys because we were out in Gilbert at the what time. What do we call the druggies? What do we call them? Stoners. Oh, yeah, because stoners. We had the stoners. Stoners. What I found out, though, is I would have class maybe with a stoner, and I'm like... Oh wow, he's pretty cool. Really like, he's cool. Just, he's just a normal guy. He's kind of he's actually pretty dang funny. Stoners were funny right? and easy to and get along with. I loved with the them. Cowboys, and yeah. I'd be like, oh, the Cowboys he's, are cool. He's not what everybody told me he I was. I love the Cowboys. They're and tough I found too. myself in every group. Like I was the guy in high school that I would just be in all the different groups, and yeah. I think that's what we're supposed to be as Christians. Well, we Paul said, I be, Paul said, I become anything to anyone. Right. Like whatever you are, whatever you are, I'll become that I to you in that. hopes that I can save you for Christ. Because that's the goal. He never went, well, but I don't like that dude. Yeah, because he's got this and he got that. Jesus uh, is like, well, I can't go there because it's a demon-possessed guy. I don't... <laughs> right. I'm not hanging and around with do demon. I don't do demon-possessed people. Oh, tax collectors? <laughs> Those says, guys are say? nuts. He says he doesn't do demon. I don't do demon-possessed, demon man. That's where I, I draw the line. Know. They're a little weird. No, he'd go to cities even knowing that that whole city was going to reject him, but right. he's... He reached out to the odd outcast, to the downtrodden, to the addicts, to those who were in pain, to those who were hurting, the ones that were the the worst of the worst of that society are the ones that he would go and target. Bring him to me. The one that everybody in that community hated, Zacchaeus. He, he went loved. right up to him. Now, and I talked about this this weekend, the only ones that annoyed Jesus and he raged against were the ones that were judgmental of all the people. That's right. That's the only ones. Yeah. The only ones. They were divisive themselves. They were the ones that were all holier than thou and trying to put the rules on top of everyone. Yeah, they wanted to kill Jesus for healing somebody. On the Sabbath. <laughs> he got somebody better. Somebody that hasn't walked in 30 years gets up and walks and all they can say is you healed on the Sabbath. Nobody went, oh my God, Ted is healed. And they were mad at the guy for carrying his mat on the Sabbath. <laughs> Let him carry his mat. He's walking. Jacks. He Let literally hasn't walk. walked in 30 years. He's walking today. And, and you're you mad, mad because he has a mat in his hand? Are but you there kidding are people me? people like that. They, they, they get mad at victories. Yeah. They get mad at, at people. Just be accepting of everyone that comes to church. I don't. I, that person's wearing white shoe, White? Oh, After gotta, Labor Day? You can't do that. You can't do that. What are they doing? Right, we and put, suddenly you dislike someone because they're wearing shoes. shoes. They're wearing shoes, and that bothers you. Right. That's all it took? Yeah. Here's a woman who was caught in the act of adultery, probably half naked, right. drug into church, and Jesus is like, oh, all right, well, who's got, the, who's got no sin? If you've got no, no sin, sin, go ahead and chuck a wrong. stone at her. Right. right. He had a whole different outlook on who he accepted. And, and then Paul says, I want you to learn how to accept people the way like Jesus, Jesus did. Because it's not natural, oh. it's not normal, but it is the right move. Because it changes eternity. We need to pray over your day. Dear me, Father, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for today's word, Lord. We, we ask, Lord, that you help us and guide us to love people the way you loved us, to accept people the way you accepted us, just 
the way they are. Mm. That try, it's not my job to change them. Mm-hmm. It's not my job to, to take what I believe for a good life and thrust it upon them. My job is to love them, mm. accept them. They'll follow me to God's house, and then God will get in there, and God will tell them what to change, how to change it. And that's a change that lasts a lifetime. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Check Watch out this clip. clip get up. Well, pastor, you don't understand the the doctor's report. You know, if I'm in a fight, I don't want to fight from the down position. You got to fight from the up position. Rocky can't fight from the mat. He's got to stand up to be able to fight. And you're fighting the doctor's report. How many people know you need to be up? You need to be excited. You need to be energized about what God is going to do about the healing that is in store. I go forward from the up position. I fight whatever is out there. You got the teenage mess going on. Well, you got to get up. You got to fight it with an up attitude. You got to marriage problems, you fight it from an up position. I can't fight from a down position. I have to fight from an authority, an up position. All right, two keys to get up. Number one. Number one is we rejoice in what God gives others. We rejoice in what God gives others. You know, we put ourselves down or we keep ourselves down when we stop celebrating the victories that other people get. And what has happened is, is the enemy uses something that God wants to use for the, isn't that what the enemy always does? He always perverts God's best in our life. And so he gets us to see things in the wrong light. So when people get blessed around us, I believe that God's trying to give you hope of what he can do in your life. So that when you get a blessing, I'm able to go, well, if God would do it for them, I know that God will do it for me, right? They got a new car. Praise the Lord. That's exciting for them. Now I know that God's got a super cool car for me in store. That lazy bum got a promotion. Well, if God will promote that lazy bum, then I know that God's going to find a way to promote me because he's my promoter. See, when I'm about being upset and mad and not celebrating others, then what was supposed to bring me hope and get me up brings me despair and keeps me down. See how the enemy does that? Well, how come they got that? Right? I've been try- we, we, we've been trying to have a baby for two years. She gets maybe married, but then two weeks later, boop, we got her out there. How come I? Right? Well, what if you celebrate it? Thank God that they got the baby because I know now God is going to work out something exciting in my life. God's going to bring me my desires. <coughs> it's a different position. It's a different mentality. And you can look at it either way. You're using what the enemy is trying to use to push you down. You're using it instead to climb your way up. When you walk through your day and you're excited for all those that are around you. Oh, they left work early. Well, praise the Lord they left work early. I'm glad that they got to go home and get a little rest time because what God did for them, God is going to restore my soul. He's going to fill me up. Everything throughout the day when somebody gets blessings, instead of getting mad at it, We celebrate the victories of everyone that is around us. Now I can't help but be up and excited about wherever I go. And guess what, enemy? I step on your head because what you meant to bring me down, I just used it to bring me up and to build my faith up. Number two. Number two is where you rejoice in what God has given me. So I rejoice and celebrate in what God has given you and everybody out there. But in the same breath, when I'm down, I have to celebrate what God has given to me, my victories. When I'm down, all I do is I think about my defeats. But instead, what I need to do is focus my mind on all of my victories. My victories are what energizes me to get back up. My victories are the ones that helps me to know God has never left me, has never forsaken me. He's always come through, maybe not right away, but in the right time. In his time, he always seems to come through. What did David do when he showed up and him and his men and all their wives and their children have been taken away? And now the men are talking about stoning him in 2 Samuel. What did he do? He went and he said, the Bible says, he strengthened himself in the Lord. What does that mean? That means that he began to relive the victories. 
Oh, my God has not forsaken me. My God is always with me. He leads me into a path of still, right? He begins to relive the things that God has helped him overcome and helped him do in his life. And in this, it began to build him up until he's like, all right, guys, we're going to go get our kids back and go get our wives back. He was able to get up. If he stayed down, they would have not gotten any of their kids back. But it was the strengthening of himself up in the Lord of going back and celebrating what God has given. Well, God hasn't given me nothing. Yeah, God has given you air and and breath and he's giving you life you got everything that you need you got time on your side you got a day ahead of you you've got a lot of great things you got the mind of christ you got god behind you you got the blessings of whatever my hands touch so whatever you need god has given to you put it in your reach i celebrate what god has given me and it energizes me to get up and hit another great day of battling those things that happen to be trying to oppress my life when uh my boys I got all wrestlers, but Baylor was my big boy. And if you see any family pictures, you're like, now who is that? Is that like a, <laughs> like, cause he's so, it's like, it's like Snow White in the drawer. Like he's so tall in the family pictures. And uh, so he was my football boy. And so I had put uh, uh, Baylor in, in the Pop Warner in the second grade. And if you haven't had a kid in Pop Warner yet, don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> And some of you know what I'm talking about because I've had kids in every sport and football was by far the most trying of my salvation in the world today. It is, it is, it's, it's a beast. It's always in the hottest times, right? And they have three hour practices, five nights a week. He's in second grade. This is not the NFL here, right? And then games happen to be at like one o'clock in the afternoon. And good news, you can sit on these metal things and cook yourself for three hours. It was like a crock pot. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> now, for whatever reason, Baylor was uh, second grade. He weighed about 66 pounds. And he was put in. They do it all by weight. And I don't know what they do, but it, I don't think it's right. Because then he was in. There was fifth graders who happened to weigh 94 pounds. How many people know there's a big difference between second grade, 66, and fifth grade? Like there's a big mental, everything type of difference. That's fine, though. We're in football. We're going to play. His very first game. I'm out on the sidelines. I'm excited. And there's little Baylor, number 56. And he, he comes out on the field and he's lined up. And on the other side of him, he was on defense, was, and we're going to call this child Goliath. He was the biggest child. No, no, no. I saw him shaving on the sidelines. This child was huge. His kids were cheering him on. Like, I was like, oh my God, he's. You know, after the game, he drove them all home. And so he's just he's a big child. I'm like, oh, my God, he's so big. And so Baylor, though he's big, he's not big on the football field. I was talking to, to a buddy of mine today. He's big, but he's not big on the football field. He came up to, like, right here on, on this child. And so, but, of course, I taught my kids, you know, give your all, hit things as hard as you can. And so there we go. They hiked the ball. And here comes Baylor. And Baylor puts air. I can tell. He hit it. And the kid just went and just bopped him down. And Baylor popped back up, hit him again. He went bop and bopped him down, hit him again. And then the whistle blew. And now it's second down. Second down, same thing. Baylor hits him. Kid pops him down. Baylor hits him. Kid pops down. Third down. Boom, boom. And then fourth down, Baylor comes to the sideline. Yeah, ah, ah. He's like, Dad, I'm wearing him out. Dad, I'm wearing him out. <laughs> no, you're not, son. You get your stuff. We're going to put you in tennis. Right, we're done. We're done here. I'm done telling other parents, I, I don't know where my kid is. I don't know which one he is. <laughs> He's not 56. I know that's not my child. To hear this message in its entirety, visit wakeuptv.tv and click on YouTube. So, you know, and I'm like, God, come on. He needs to have some victory in his life. So it feels a little success out there on the field. And so they go out again. The kids just swats him down on the first down. And so I'm like, God, give him some success, right? And so just because God loves me so much. Now, you have to realize about the Anderson kids, uh, when they were younger, we had this thing where we would do, I would throw it. If they did a superstar catch and caught it, they'd do like a little little victory, a little, 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 little devil has, house dance, right? A little... <laughs> And they do like a little thing. It was just a little thing that they did, right? It was our victory dance. And so, boom, second down. Here comes Baylor. And I, whoop. And this kid right here, for whatever reason, fell into the legs of this kid. And this kid fell into the Goliath, right? And so Goliath is falling over. Baylor just had to go. Pfft, and I, but Baylor hits him. The kid falls down, right? And all of a sudden, Baylor turns to us on the sideline. He's all. <laughs> he's doing a little dance. And we're all like, get the ball. 
ball, because here comes the ball. And the kid with the ball runs right into Baylor, knocks Baylor down on the ground. Baylor pops back up, and he's back to dancing. He's just dancing. He had his victory. He had his victory. And here's my thing, living with Bible church. We've got to be like Baylor, that no matter how many times we get knocked down. Remember, Micah says this, you may knock me down, my enemy, but I will arise. Proverbs says you can knock a good man down seven times, and he will get up. We are a church that keeps getting up, and we keep getting up, and we got a big Goliath problem. We hit that with everything we have. We get knocked down and we get back up. We get knocked down. We get back up. We get knocked down. We get get back. We continue to hit and to hit and to hit with everything, but we will not stay down. We are a church that no matter what happened, yeah, I get it. The divorce was hard, but we get back up. Yeah, I get it that the recession hit you and you lost it all, but we get back up. I know that the doctor tried to put you down, but that which is born of God will arise. The work that he started in you, he will finish. And I get up and I continue to hit. And the teenage years are a big old mess right now in your life, but you continue to hit it and you continue to get up and you continue to get up and you get up. Come on, church, do we get up? Come on, do we get up? Do we get up? We just keep getting up and getting up until we get that Goliath victory, that Baylor victory in our lives. Buy your heads, close your eyes. If you're here right now, I just want to do something a little, little different. The next minute or so, maybe you're here today and you feel like you've been knocked down a little bit and this message spoke to you. And you're like, Pastor, I want to get up. I'm done. I feel like I've been down long enough. I want to, I want to get up. I do, Pastor. I want to be there with you right now and pray with you, if that's you. If that's you here today, and you've taken your punches, but today is the day that you stand up. I want you just to lift your hand for me right now. I see hands all over the place. Hands all over. Life's been hitting and hitting. Nobody's looking around. This is what I want to do with you. I, I, it's just going to take a few moments because people are more important than time. We said that last week. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. I want you to get up and come up forward right now. It's, a, it, 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 it's symbolism right now. As you get up, you're saying, life, I'm going to get up. I want you to come on, give them a hand clap as they get up. And I want you to come forward right now and meet me down here at the altar. Say, we're going to fight this thing together. We're going to fight this breakup together. We're going to fight this financial. We're going to fight this addiction. You've been down long enough on an addiction that today is the day to get up. You've been fighting within the family long enough. Come on, church. We're going to get up. It's a symbolism as you begin to stand up right now. It is, hey, I am done being down. I'm going to rise up. I may have fallen seven times, but I will get up. Sickness, you cannot keep me down. Disease, you cannot keep me down. Hurt, you cannot keep me down. Divorce, you cannot keep me down. Guess what? Death could not keep Jesus down. He did arise in three days, and today we will arise. That he took on your sickness. He took on your disease. He took on your hurt. He took on your pain. He took it on everything so that you don't have to. Stress will not keep you down. Worry will not keep you down. Anxiety will not keep you down. This life will not hold you down. It cannot hold us back as a group. Living work Bible Church, this is us right here. This is who we are. We are fighters. We're the Rocky Balboas of this lifetime. That it does not matter how many times we get knocked down. We're saying this today. We get up. We get up. We gotta get up. Some of you have been down since some things happened to you as a teenager. Today we get up. And that which was meant to destroy your life is gonna be what's gonna fuel you to make a difference and change many other lives. You're up. Come on, somebody. You're up today. You're up. What the enemy has stolen is coming back to you. Marriages that feel like they're down and they're broken today. I have a word for you. It's up today that we got up today. This marriage is going up. This family, the broken hearts are being mended, are being put back together. That we as a group, you know, there's something powerful when we stand up together, isn't it? When we stand up together, because this is who we are. This is us. We're a church. I love the excitement that the church got behind each and every one of you as you came up here. 
because that's what the church does. We celebrate. Come on, we celebrate. We celebrate when people get up. And this will be our prayer. And this is going to be today when you came up here. This is what I believe you're saying. For the rest of my life, no matter what happens, I'm a get upper. That's who I am. I just keep getting up. I just keep getting up. I just keep getting up. Doesn't matter how many times I get knocked down. And to me, I love that scripture. And I would just, I would have that scripture just somewhere where I see it all the time. And to me, don't get excited when you knock me down. I will arise. I will arise. I will arise. I will arise. I will arise to all that God has called me to be. I will arise to the relationship that he has destined me to have. My family will arise to be a loving, caring family that it's supposed to be. That my emotions will arise and the depression cannot hold me down anymore. But instead, joy will arise in my heart. That every area of my life, my my finances will arise. My business will arise. My life will arise. I will keep going and going for the rest of my life. And at the end of my life, I will know that I have truly lived a life of success. Because success doesn't come to those that are down. It comes to those that keep getting up. Amen. Come on. We get up. And we get up. And we get up. And we get up. Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we as a church, we pray over all of these that got up today. Lord, that you will help them find everything that they need. That they realize as they leave here today, you put within reach all that they need, Lord, for success. And even when they trip up and fall down, that they keep getting up. And they keep getting up. That they won't give up on their teenager. That they won't give up on the relationship that you brought into their life. That they will not give up on their finances. That they will not give up. Because this is us. We are a church that just gets up and gets up. And gets up. And we go from victory to victory to victory. Come on, victory and 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 victory. We strengthen ourselves up in you. We are constantly reminding ourselves of what you have put inside of us and what you have given us. And then we celebrate all those in our world that are getting the victories in their life because that's who we are. We're a church that celebrates whatever victory, big or small, that happens for others, it happens for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Give them a big hand clap as they go back down to their seats. Thumbs up. Share it. Hope you liked it. Love all our radio listeners. We love you guys. Thanks for watching today. And uh, those who, who are, uh, uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, if you're subscribe. new, type in the comments, like, you know, where you're from. We'd love to hear that. To hear Introduce that. yourself. Everybody say hello to the new people. And, but make sure you subscribe to the show. Right. And visit wakeuptv.tv. And don't forget about all of our conferences. We've got a parenting conference. Come on. Get your creators doing the way they're supposed to be doing yeah. life. Yeah. And uh, make sure you're at that prayer conference and a finance conference in November. It is be the blessed. fall of conferences. Ooh, the fall of conferences. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us today. Find out more or stay connected with Wake Up at wakeuptv.tv. You can also subscribe to our daily text reminders for Wake Up Daily Bible Study, which includes a direct link to the next day's episode by texting Wake Up, no spaces, to 84483. That's Wake Up to 84483. Thank you for listening to Wake Up on Christian Living Radio. Start your day every day with a positive word and prayer. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Christian Living Radio, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ 24-7. Our goal is to bring you a life-changing word through music and diverse programming like the one you're listening to now. Pastor Kenyatta Goins is the visionary of Christian Living Radio, and he's dedicated to the idea that Christians should even have a more prominent presence in the marketplaces. Maybe you need prayer for yourself and or your family, maybe for a friend. We'd be privileged to stand in the gap for you. If you're listening to this broadcast, click on the Contact Us tab and send us your prayer request. We'd also like to hear from you. 
if you have something on your mind, or just give us some feedback. We support many ministries, so maybe you'd like to make a one-time or a monthly recurring donation. We believe that when you sow into these ministries, you'll indeed be blessed. And of course, if you sow into this show in particular, we believe that it's a blessing for you, so please consider sponsoring us. There's a special area under the Donate tab where you can send your monetary gift or call 520-812-6363. That's 520-812-6363 to receive more information about sponsorship. Thank you.